Mark Gasol, the defending champs, reworking that front court. They also traded JaVale McGee to the Cavs to clear up space for his signing. And the man, he's not, he's not even the man, the myth. He's the man, the legend. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski just working like crazy. The draft, free agency, insane. All right. So, obviously, the Lakers aren't resting on their laurels, right? So, they trade for Dennis Schroeder. They add Gasol. They add Montrez Harrell. What are you hearing about everything they're doing this offseason? Well, it's pretty rare when a defending champion actually upgrades their bench and upgrades players who upgrades on players who help them win a title. Rajon Rondo went to Atlanta. Uh, Dwight Howard goes to Philly. So they bring in Dennis Schroeder in a trade, a sixth man of the year candidate. Marcus Gasol, future Hall of Fame center, won a title two years ago in Toronto. He comes in now uh, in the middle, and this is a this is a Laker team that around the edges has gotten even better. Rob Palenka has had a very good offseason here after uh, the Lakers finally won uh, that title with LeBron James, Anthony Davis. All right, so we don't know where they're going to play. Let's say they do play in the Staples Center, and the other team that occupies the Staples Center this season, of course, uh, being the LA Clippers, and it almost feels like some kind of arms race, like you know what. Whatever you do, yeah. I can do better. So the Clippers have added Serge Ibaka. He reunites with Kawhi Leonard. I mean, what what does that mean for the rivalry going forward? Yeah, the Clippers have catching up to do, and it always seems like the Clippers and Lakers are competing very often for the same players. But the Clippers wanted to keep some of their key guys. Marcus Morris, they signed to a four-year, $64 million deal. Marquise's brother, uh, you know, bringing him back was important. And, and the Serge Ibaka commitment was huge. For the Clippers, it gives them a, a, a veteran front court player can play both spots, and they still have more work to do. Luke Kennard comes in from Detroit, who can play uh, both guard spots, give them some good minutes there, and you know they still have a few more roster spots. Reggie Jackson, who they signed last year, he's a possibility. Uh, he might be able to return to that uh, Clipper bench, but you know with Ty Lue, this is a different team now, and this is a different mm -hmm. head coach. And, and a little different way of looking at things, but the Clippers know they've got a gap to close with the Lakers. Uh, really quickly, do you have a sense of how involved Ty Lue is with these personnel decisions, how, how front and center he is with what's happening there? Yeah, he, listen, it's a pretty collaborative place there. Lawrence Frank, Mike Winger, their front mm -hmm. office, they spend a lot of time talking with Ty Lue about how pieces fit and how they want to play, and mm -hmm. I know that's a conversation they have every day. It's just so fascinating to have these two teams in the same building. A Clippers still trying to battle for the soul of LA <laughs> and the schedule comes out December 1st. So we'll see when they play head to head. All right. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks. Thanks for all your hard work, Woj. We appreciate it. <laughs> NBA Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz agreed to a five-year max extension worth to up $195 million. Wrap your brain around that one. Uh, he's coming off a postseason where he averaged over 36 per. Uh, Jason Tatum, also five-year max with Boston, also worth up to $195 million. Uh, First-time All-Star in 2020 and the Lakers agreed to a deal with Marcus Gasol. The defending champs really reworking that front court. They also traded JaVale McGee to the Cavs to clear up some space for the Gasol a signing a nice and busy times right here in the middle of football season for NBA insider Brian Windhorst. So uh, can we start with Giannis, our two-time reigning NBA MVP, because he enters the final season of his contract, as we all know, but he could sign the Supermax five years, $228 million, to remain with the Bucks. What sort of ripple effect could that have, Wendy, on the rest of the league going forward? Well, well, Hannah, it's really everything. Um, to be honest with you, we just had the craziest week of NBA transactions in league history, but none, nothing is more important than waiting on this Giannis extension. If he extends, the Bucks are the gigantic winners of this offseason. If he does not extend, we're going to see a mad rush and dash to prepare for his possible free agency next summer. And if you look at moves that teams have made across the league, whether it's the Miami Heat signing four players to one-year contracts, whether it's the Toronto Raptors tailoring the contracts of their players so that they have more room next year, or the Dallas Mavericks making trades to clear off guaranteed money, those teams believe there's a chance that Giannis may not sign it. And so the whole league, in one way or another, is sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for that decision. Okay, so let's really play this thing forward now. Let's talk about Anthony Davis, because the whole world expects him to return to the Lakers. So how potentially could what Giannis is doing or ends up doing impact the type of contract that AD ends up getting. Yeah, it's unusual for AD to delay his re-signing for, for this long. And 
One of the things he could be watching is what Giannis does. If Giannis elects to sign the, the extension, then we could see AD potentially sign for longer. But if Giannis sets himself up to be a free agent next year, I know it seems hard for them to believe that the Lakers could do it, but that might spur Anthony Davis to only sign a one-year contract with a player option, which is the kind of deal that LeBron James is on, to leave flexibility in Lakers payroll. So there's a lot of people watching Giannis Antetokounmpo right now. Um, I know that as you were busy getting all this information, you probably had one eye on the football screen, as we all did yesterday, and stood <laughs> up when we heard Derek Carr's audible in the Chiefs <laughs> Raiders game last night. Let's take a listen. Western Conference Finals appearance, and the Lakers, fresh off the title, agreed to deal with Mark Gasol. They drafted him originally. Defending champs are reworking their front court, trading Javel McGee to the Cavs to clear up some space for Gasol. All right, it's not official until Woj says so. Actually, sometimes Woj says so, then it becomes official. But in any case, uh, we're going with these stories we just told you about. Mitchell and Tatum, the extensions, why do these deals make sense for the players and their teams? Two foundational cornerstone players for both franchises. The, the kind of players that you build around, you know, that guys want to play with, that represent you know, your organization. Those are no-brainers, both five years, with the opportunity to make nearly 200 million dollars for both Donovan Mitchell and uh, Jason Tatum. All right, Lakers win the title and say, let's get a new guy in the five spot. Why was that move made? Well, great opportunity there. Once Dwight Howard left for Philadelphia, they bring in not only Montrez Harrell, but now Marc Gasol, a much more skilled you know, future Hall of Fame player you know, who can do so many things on the court offensively, defensively, rebound. And, you know, I think for Marc Gasol, a chance. Remember, this is the organization that drafted him. He was traded for his brother, Pau, before he ever played an NBA game. Now Pau's out living in Southern California. He'll be near his brother and have a chance now to win another NBA title. He won one with the Raptors. Woj using just one of his many phones. Thanks for joining us. He's got another NBA championship. The Lakers have already pretty much renovated that entire roster. They picked up the top two bench scores in the NBA and Dennis Schroeder and Montrezl Harrell also improved their three-point shooting by adding Wesley Matthews to a team that ranked 21st in three-point percentage last season and re-signing KCP to a new three-year deal. Yeah, that should help in that area also. All right, to dig a little deeper into NBA free agency, we've got our front office insider Bobby Marks with us. And give Rob Palinka and that front office in L.A. a lot of credit for what they've done for the team that's about to be defending a championship. But considering what they've done, what else can they do? Yeah, rarely do we see a team flip their roster over, right? right? Of course, they still have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, but Wes Matthews, Montrez Harrell, and Contavious Cole Pope, of course, is back. Dennis Schroeder, they've added. Now, this is what they have left to do. They've got four roster spots. Mm -hmm. They only have the veteran minimum exception that's worth about $2.6 million. But here's the challenge. They are hard capped, so you need to fit those spots under that number, $6.5 million. But the challenge becomes is, and here's a player that's being linked to them, is a player like Marcus Gasol. To get Marcus Gasol, it's got to be on the veteran minimum exception, right. unless you can try to work out a sign and trade, possibly for someone like JaVale McGee. The hard part is he only makes $4 million, so you've got to make the money work. But so far, this team has really reshaped itself. Best team in the West right now. Yeah, it'd be interesting if Gasol wants to go West and try to win a second NBA championship. All right, so let's talk about some of the uh, another team, Bobby, that maybe is not getting the attention it deserves based on what they've done with their roster. Yeah, that's the Portland Trailblazers. That's a team that was just fighting to get into the playoffs last year, right. sneaks into the eighth uh, seed. I've got them as a the number two team in the Western Conference really? right now. Yes, they okay. get an A-plus for the offseason. I know we don't give trophies for the offseason. No, we do not. But they're getting, it, they're getting it from me. And I think when we look at their roster, here is what they've been able to do. They've added Robert Covington from the Rockets. Yep. They've re-signed Rodney Hood. Of course, Damian Lillard, CJ.